So for me, the most useful theory is the CAPM. Um, when it deals with the fact that the market portfolio uh, is the most efficient portfolio that uh, investors can hold. Um, and it is impressive to notice that since Sharp and Littner theorize the CAPM, very few investors were able to overperform uh, the MSCI World Index, which is, which is considered as a market portfolio inside the equity asset class. On the other hand, the least uh, theory uh, is the CAPM itself when we want to use it as a pricing tool. It means that uh, when we want uh, to forecast the return of the particular stock, um, the uh, CAPM uh, is useless. So uh, in a micro view, uh, we can say that the CAPM um, doesn't work. But on a macro view, the fact that, so that it is so difficult to beat the indexes using active management is an empirical proof uh, that validates the efficient market theories as well as the CAPM. So for me, it means that um, the scope of the traditional investment theories is still alive. After the crisis that started in 2007, there has been increasing criticism of mainstream finance theory and mainstream economics. Many leading figures, uh, both at the academic level and many leading practitioners, felt that the theory, mainstream theory, is essentially too abstract. In addition, there has been increasing criticism that uh, in universities and business schools, teaching does not uh, give an historical perspective. Now, we all know that the CFA Institute is very interested and uh, very concerned about uh, um, teaching and uh, education in particular, ed continuing education of the professionals that work in asset management. So they commissioned this study to understand if the body of knowledge that they proposed to universities and to charter holders needed somehow to be changed, to be updated, and if yes, in what directions. In a nutshell, Mainstream finance theory and mainstream economics is not uh, an empirical science in the modern sense. That is to say, it's not a science based on data. Just to show a few, to make a few examples, take the notion of uh, uh, optimizing rational agents. These are agents that know everything in the future, every possible contingency is in the future, and they're able to assign a probability to every possible contingency. Well, that's nothing empirical, nothing that corresponds to reality. Or, even more, consider that many, let's say, notions, many concepts uh, in, in uh, mainstream theories are essentially related to quantities that are not observable. For example, prices are defined as uh, the present value of an infinite stream of future cash flows. But again, we cannot observe future cash flows. And uh, these future cash flows are not part of the theory. So in a sense, the theory is based on things that are not observable. So now, what are the consequences for, um, let's say, investment management for investment professionals? Well, first, uh, poor, invest poor um, uh, let's say, um, forecasting capabilities. The theory, which is uh, so abstract, uh, does not have real forecasting capabilities. And to, to make, uh, let's consider, for example, that uh, Investment managers work on discovering price anomalies, which means that they essentially work by uh, exploiting the failures of the, of the, of the theory. And uh, more, even more uh, serious, this type of theory is not able to provide a good uh, uh, risk management. In particular, it's not able to somehow understand major market events such as market crashes and major markets, uh, let's say, loss of values. Let's assume that, uh, there, is a, that there is no, no, no theory on which uh, there is complete agreement. Let's assume that there is no, no, real theor no real economic theory in the same sense of the, of the physical sciences. Well, at this point, uh, clearly students uh, and even professionals should be taught to be more critical, to be very critical, to uh, 
understand and to look at the theory with a lot of critical sense. So the first uh, thing that should really be reinforced uh, is the critical sense, the ability to criticize. And this is one thing. The second thing is uh, perhaps the next uh, is uh, uh, the lack of a system approach, kind of an engineering approach, which essentially leads to macroeconomics. Today, the teaching of finance, many observe in, in the course of our work, many observe that the teaching of finance uh, is essentially not uh, really linked and based on macroeconomics. Macroeconomics is, on the other hand, extremely important for anything related to finance. Finance live, financial markets live in the economy. And uh, finally, I would say there are many other things that might be said. Historical perspective, just because of the sa for the same reason that there is no theory on which there is global and total agreement, it's important that uh, students, but also practitioners, understand the many different uh, economic and financial systems that have been proposed, uh, both at the level of the theory, but also in practice, and the development, the historical development of, of these things. And finally, I would say one very important point is the understanding of the money creation process, which is missing in every present in every, in every curriculum. And that's a very fundamental process because uh, essentially the money which is injected in the economy is responsible for the level of prices, either for the economy or for specific asset and ultimately for asset inflation and for what causes bubbles and, uh, and finally crashes. So these are essentially the main points that are missing.